Welcome to Shendra's Engineering Tutorials. It's now in this video, um, I'll be explaining what is a RAM signal here. What's a RAM signal? And uh, the Laplace transform of the RAM signal. And let's solve some numericals based on uh, the RAM function of what, where we come across, right? So how a RAM signal looks like? This is how uh, the t, the time period, t, the factor t on this side, uh, t equal to zero, and uh, r of t over this side on the vertical axis right and this is how it goes on increases the amplitude goes on increases now the mathematical representation of this one r of t r of t would be equal to t for uh, t greater than equal to zero and uh, prior to that we don't have any signal so it's zero otherwise Otherwise, this is how uh, uh, the RAM signal, the mathematical representation of a RAM signal is written as. And uh, in many applications, not the time domain signal, but we need the frequency domain signal of the RAM function. So it, it's like a, a R of S, how to obtain R of S? The Laplace transform of uh, R of T would give us R of S, which is equal to, um, here in this case, according to Laplace transform, going back to the, um, uh, formula for Laplace obtaining the Laplace transform the given function t its t is multiplied with e raised to minus st and integrated with respect to t and so we have dt that uh, and once again what are the limits of integration that can be obtained from here so it's it exists only for t equal to 0 to infinity so it's 0 to infinity it's not minus infinity sorry it's not minus infinity to infinity it's uh, 0 to infinity why because prior to uh, 0 t equal to 0 we don't have any signal so this is the transformation okay so here this is the uh, we start the analysis from this equation here we have two functions this is the function 1 and this function 2 in this case definitely we have to go we have to take the support of uv rule what we have is you uh, you might have seen in your previous grades uh, integral u v dt would result in uh, expanding this one we have a rule first function first function u and uh, integral of second function v dt in this case because uh, it will be more easier dt and we have to plug in the zero i mean lower limit and upper limit to this one minus derivative of the first function derivative of, uh, keep in mind derivative of the first function integral of second function dt and this product this product this whole product is integrated again with respect to t and we need to have some limits of integration i mean that will be discussed over here right so in this case let uh, in this discussion let t be our u okay this one and uh, let v be our i mean e rise to e rise to minus st be our v okay so this will be now considering this one this one this one right the first function this is treated as u and this is treated as v and going ahead making use of this formula what we have is i'll, I'll do that side let me take that part that will be more convenient for me and it will be easy for you to have a watch right uh, according to this one making use of uv rule in this expression what we have is r of uh, s will be equal to r of s will be equal to the first function as it is t and the integral of the second function the integral of the second function the integral of e raised to minus st will be e raised to minus st upon minus s integral of e raised to minus st and we need to plug in we need to substitute the lower limit and upper limit in the expression minus going ahead what we have is derivative of the first function derivative of t it's one one into integral of the second function integral of uh, this one e raised to minus st upon minus s why because the entire uh, integration is uh, done with respect to t and whatever differentiation also with respect to done with t with respect to t so if this is integ integrating this one with respect to t this would be the variable this would be the constant and so this comes down this what and now once again uh, have a watch carefully this entire this product is integrated once again with respect to t and the limits of integration being 0 to infinity because the signal exists only for t equal to 0 to 
infinity right and uh, further moving ahead we need to plug in these values wherever we find t uh, upper limit and lower limit plugging in the upper limit plugging in the upper limit we have uh, infinity in place of t into e raised to minus s into infinity upon minus s and plugging in the lower limit what we have is minus 0 into e raised to minus s into 0 upon minus s this is what uh, uh, for the first term and uh, is the minus continuing going ahead minus uh, integration is with respect to t so this can be taken out no way connection between no way connection inside the uh, integration so that comes out uh, into 1 upon minus s integral 0 to infinity e raised to minus st d t this is the simplification right and uh, here coming back to the substitutions it's infinity okay this is infinity but multiplied with e raised to minus minus infinity this whole thing becomes infinity so e raised to minus infinity that will be zero zero into infinity that is zero once again i am repeating it may be it's infinity but still this infinity is multiplied with e raised to minus e raised to minus infinity e raised to minus infinity that will be zero and so the entire equation this one this term will be zero coming back to the second one it's zero so whatever whatever value we have that will be equal to zero and so we don't this is the leftover value of this one right and going ahead this negative and this negative gets cancelled and so we have plus one upon s over here integrating this one with respect to t again e rise to minus st is integrated with uh, respect to t so what we have is e rise to minus s t upon minus s and uh, the plugging in values being 0 to infinity so this continues r of s is equal to 0 we don't need this anymore we are left with 1 upon s from the previous expression and uh, minus s of this term as it is in the denominator plugging in the upper limit what we have is e rise to minus of s into infinity minus comes the lower limit e rise to minus s into 0 this is what we have so 1 upon s as it is and also we have uh, minus s in the denominator as it is e rise to minus infinity this will be infinity total infinity and e rise to minus infinity that will be 0 minus e rise to minus s into 0 that will be e rise to 0 that will be 1 and uh, this negative this negative would be cancelled out being positive and uh, this is a it is a multiplication in between it goes on it's a multiplication over here it's it's a multiplication so uh, multiplying this one the final result would be 1 upon s square which is the laplace transform of the ramp function okay now this one it's a very important uh, uh, transformation laplace transform of a ramp function please have a note going ahead in the discussions we may be in need of evaluating the response of a high pass rc circuit for a ramp input this one response of a it may be this may be the need response evaluating the response of a high pass rc circuit for a ramp input so we need to consider the ramp circuit this is how sorry we need to consider the high pass rc circuit this is the circuit the uh, we have a capacitor and we have a resistor like this and uh, the high pass rc circuit in its uh, laplace equivalent it's like uh, one upon sc its representation and r input is given over here vi of s and uh, v naught of s is collected everything is in s domain right and according to potential divider rule this one from the circuit according to potential divider rule v naught of s can be written as v naught of s will be equal to the impedance across which the output is collected and so we have r upon total impedance of the circuit it's r plus 1 upon sc bigger one into the input voltage vi of s this is what we have to write according to the potential divider rule right and it's a response of a high pass rt circuit for a ramp input just now in our previous discussion i have evaluated the uh, laplace transform of a ramp function and in this case input voltage will be ramp and uh, 
the laplace transform of ram function is uh, 1 upon s square we have evaluated just now into the total uh, equation as it comes down as it is r of r upon r plus 1 upon s c which is the uh, which is the this 1 upon s square is the input input function which is a ramp and it's a laplace transform ramp and it's laplace transfer into the whole equation as it is now a small simplification over here uh, going ahead what we have is this one uh, finding out the lcm simplifying everything what we have is we have uh, in the denominator of this one we have s c and cross multiplying this one plus s r c and we have r in the numerator as it is from the previous expression right and watch carefully this square here, this one, this one, this square, and uh, one of the s gets cancelled over here. This s and that gets cancelled. This one, which is in the denominator, goes up. And uh, what we'll be left with uh, here, I'll be continuing on that side. V naught of v naught of uh, s will be equal to here. Continuing this one, this goes up. This goes up. This s as it is. What we have is one upon s into this one r c r c upon 1 plus s r c 1 plus s r c and uh, even more simplification over here taking out r c as common from this one and this one what we have is 1 upon s as it is into uh, r c in the numerator as it is here no change taking out r c as common this one this r c as common from this one and this one what we have is r c came out and we are left with s over here s plus uh, we are will be left with 1 upon r c in this expression right and you can clearly see this this r c this r c gets cancelled and finally v naught of s we are left with equal to 1 upon s into 1 upon s plus 1 by r c this is the leftover right and uh, the main motive of this discussion the main objective is to obtain the response of a high-pass RC circuit for a ramp input. This isn't the final answer. We need to obtain the inverse Laplace transform of this one and that will be the response of a high-pass RC circuit for a ramp input. In that case, we need to split this expression uh, in order to obtain the inverse Laplace transform. Some modification, some simplification comes in between in the, into the picture. This has to be divided into its uh, uh, partial fractions. Uh, there are many types of partial fractions it goes on you can understand uh, we have the application as we go on with the discussion for the time being now this can be split into its partial fractions as a upon s plus b by s plus 1 upon r c this is how this fraction is divided into written into its partial fractions now we have to evaluate the values of a and b plug in those values then the inverse laplace transform would give the response of a high pass RC circuit in its time domain it's an s domain doing something doing some manipulations doing some simplification that gives the response of a high pass RC circuit to the ramp input then so how to evaluate the value of a a is given as guys it's a rule like uh, what we have some rules in the partial um, fractions a is given as uh, writing this one this equation one upon s into s plus 1 by rc as it is here this one into the a residue s and subjecting s is equal to 0 and in this case we don't have we uh, this s and uh, this s and this s gets cancelled we won't be left with this one and uh, after cancellation wherever we come across s that will be plugged in with 0 in the sense let me go ahead equal to 1 upon uh, this s doesn't cancel doesn't get cancelled but still we are substituting this s with s is equal to 0 so that comes 0 plus 1 by rc 1 by rc and uh, we are left with uh, 1 by 1 by rc and finally what we have is this goes up and uh, rc which is the value of a this is the value of a we need to plug in this value back and that will be the game changer right and how how about b how to evaluate the value of b b is equal to once again consider this very equation 1 upon s into s plus 1 by rc the residue of b this will be the multiplied with the residue of this b which is a uh, s plus 1 by rc 
the whole this fraction is multiplied with the residue of b subjecting s is equal to minus 1 by r c in this case and uh, you can see this one this exists no more getting cancelled with this one these two being common right we are left with 1 upon this went away this doesn't exist anymore so we are left with s which should be substituted with s is equal to minus 1 upon rc that will be 1 by s is substituted with minus 1 by rc this goes up and we will be left with minus rc this is the value for b now this b a value should be plugged in over here here now this one this b is equal to minus rb this will be the game changer right Con these are the values sir. these are the please have a note these are the values of a and b here these are the values of a and b right plugging in the values of a and b back to over here that gives the uh, what we have is v naught of s v naught of s will be what's the value of a it's rc rc by s plus minus b values minus rc by s plus 1 by rc this is what we have right and uh, uh, rc can be taken out as common from both the terms so rc and we will be left with 1 upon s over here and we have a negative that's a minus a 1 by s plus 1 by rc we are left with this and now we are almost at the end considering the inverse laplace transform of this one which gives a v naught of uh, t which will be equal to rc as it is nothing to do with with the rc in the laplace or obtaining the inverse laplace it's a constant so nothing to do with this one the inverse laplace transform of 1 upon s will be 1 1 minus guys i have done this in my previous uh, videos like the laplace transform of 1 is 1 upon s i have proved it i'll provide that in the i'll provide the link of that video in the description box please find the attachment the laplace transform of 1 is 1 upon s and so the inverse laplace transform of uh, 1 upon s would go back to 1 it's this these two are Laplace transform pairs and what about this one of 1 upon s plus 1 by rc that will be uh, the inverse Laplace transform of this one would be exponential rise to minus uh, t by rc even this proving this I have done this derivation in my previous videos both the links will be provided in the description box please have a uh, go back go back to check if how this one here these two are laplace transforms the laplace trans inverse of this one would be this the laplace transform of this one would be this and uh, these two are the laplace transform pairs these two are known as the laplace transform pairs and this is my final response of a high pass rc circuit subjected to ramp input this what this is to be proved right so hope you understood this video if you find this useful please Subscribe my channel Shendras Engineering Tutorials and for more updates stay with me. Uh, this is all for today's video. Signing off Shendras Engineering Tutorials. Stay home, stay safe.